Hi guys, we're here for our Bible and Year Challenge reading for October 25th. And that reading today will come from Jeremiah 35 through 36, Psalm 119 verses 145 through 152, and Revelation 14. Okay, so Jeremiah chapter 35. The faithful Rechabites. This is the message the Lord gave Jeremiah when Jehoiakim, son of jo Josiah, was king of Judah. Go to the settlement where the families of the Rechabites live and invite them to the Lord's temple. Take them into one of the inner rooms and offer them some wine. So I went to see Je Jazaniah, son of Jeremiah, and grandson of Habazinia and all of his brothers and sons, representing all the Rechabite families. I took them to the temple and we went into the assigned rooms. The room assigned to the sons of Haman, son of Igdaliah, a man of God. This room was located next to the one used by the palace officials, directly above the room of Messiah, son of Shalom, the temple gatekeeper. I set cups and jugs of wine before them and invited them to have a drink, but they refused. No, they said, we don't drink wine because Jehonadab, son of Rechab, our ancestor, gave us this command, you and your descendants must never drink wine. And do not build houses or plant crops or vineyards, but always live in tents. If you follow these commands, you will live long, good lives in the land. So we have obeyed him in all these things. We have never had a drink of wine since then, nor have our wives, our sons, or our daughters. We haven't built houses or owned vineyards or farms or planted crops. We have lived in tents and have fully obeyed all the commands of Jehonadab, our ancestor. But when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon arrived in this country, we were afraid of the Babylonian and Arabian armies. So we decided to move to Jerusalem. That is why we are here. Then the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah. The Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, Go and say to the people in Judah and Jerusalem, Come and learn a lesson about how to obey me. The Rechabites do not drink wine because their ancestor Jehonadab told them not to. But I have spoken to you again and again, and you refuse to listen or obey. I have sent you prophet after prophet to tell you to turn from your wicked ways and to stop worshiping other gods so that you might live in peace here in the land I gave to you and your ancestors. But you would not listen to me or obey. The families of Rechab have obeyed their ancestor completely, but you have refused to listen to me. Therefore, the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel, says, Because you refuse to listen or answer when I call, I will send upon Judah and Jerusalem all the disasters I have threatened. Then Jeremiah turned to the Rechabites and said, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. You have obeyed your ancestor, Jehonadab, in every respect, following all his instructions. Because of this, Jehonadab, son of Rechab, will always have descendants who serve me. I, the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, have spoken. Chapter 36, Barach reads the Lord's messages. During the fourth year that Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was king in Judah, the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah. Get a scroll and write down all my messages against Israel, Judah, and the other nations. Begin with the first message back in the days of Josiah and write down every message you have given Right up to the present time. Perhaps the people of Judah will repent if they see in writing all the terrible things I have planned for them. Then I will be able to forgive their sins and wrongdoings. So Jeremiah sent for Barak, son of Neriah. And as Jeremiah dictated, Barak wrote down all the prophecies that the Lord had given him. Then Jeremiah said to Barak, I am a prisoner here and unable to go to the temple. So you go to the temple on the next day of fasting and read the messages from the Lord that are on the scroll. On that day, people will be there from all over Judah. Perhaps even yet they will turn from their evil ways and ask the Lord's forgiveness before it is too late. For the Lord's terrible anger has been pronounced against them. Barak did as Jeremiah told him and read these messages from the Lord to the, to the people at the temple. This happened on the day of sacred fasting held in late autumn during the fifth year of the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah. People from all over Judah came to attend the services at the temple on that day. Barak read Jeremiah's words to all the people from the temple room of Gemariah, son of Shaphan. This room was just off the upper courtyard of the temple near the new gate entrance. When Micaiah, son of Jemariah, and grandson of Shaphan heard the messages from the Lord, he went down to the secretary's room in the palace where the administrative officials were meeting. Elishama, the secretary, was there along with Deliah, son of Shemaiah, El Nathan, son of Akbor, Jemariah, son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, son of Hananiah, and all the others with official responsibilities. When Micaiah told them about the messages Barak was reading to the people, the officials sent Jehudi, son of 
Nethaniah, grandson of Shelemiah and great-grandson of Cushi, to ask Barak to come and read the messages to them too. So Barak took the scroll and went to them. Sit down and read the scroll to us, the officials said, and Barak did as they requested. By the time Barak had finished reading, they were badly frightened. We must tell the king what we have heard, they said, but first tell us how you got these messages. Did they come directly from Jeremiah? So Barak explained, Jeremiah dictated them to me word by word, and I wrote down his words with ink on this scroll. You and Jeremiah should both hide, the officials told Barak. Don't tell anyone where you are. Then the officials left the scroll for safekeeping in the room of Elishama the secretary and went to tell the king. King Jehoiakim burns the scroll. The king sent Jehudi to get the scroll. To get the scroll. Jehudi brought it from Elishama's room and read it to the king as all his officials stood by. It was late autumn and the king was in a winterized part of the palace sitting in front of a fire to keep warm. Whenever Jehudi finished reading three or four columns, the king took his knife and cut off that section of the scroll. He then threw it into the fire section by section until the whole scroll was burned up. Neither the king nor his officials showed any signs of fear or repentance at what they heard. Even when El Nathan, Deliah, and Gemariah begged the king not to bring the scroll, he wouldn't listen. Then the king commanded his son, Jeremiel, Sariah, son of Azrael, and Shelemiah, son of Abdiel, to arrest Barak and Jeremiah, but the Lord had hidden them. Jeremiah rewrites the scroll. After the king had burned Jeremiah's scroll, the Lord gave Jeremiah another message. He said, get another scroll and write everything again, just as you did on the scroll King Jehoiakim burned. Then say to the king, this is what the Lord says. You burned the scroll because it, it said that the king of Babylon would destroy this land and everything in it. Now that this, now this is what the Lord says about King Jehoiakim of Judah. He will have no heirs to sit on the throne of David. His dead body will be thrown out to lie unburied, exposed to hot days and frosty nights. I will punish him and his family and his, his officials because of their sins. I will pour out on them and on all their people of Judah and Jerusalem all the disasters I have promised, for they would not listen to my warnings. Then Jeremiah took another scroll and dictated again to his secretary at Barak. He wrote everything that had been on the scroll King Jehoiakim had burned in the fire. Only this time he added much more. Okay, Psalm 119. This is a very long psalm. Verses 145 through 152. I pray with all my heart, answer me, Lord. I will obey your principles. I cry out to you, save me, that I may obey your decrees. I rise early before the sun is up. I cry out for help and put my hope in your words. I stay awake through the night thinking about your promise. In your faithful love, O oh Lord, hear my cry. In your justice, save my life. Those lawless people are coming near to attack me. They live far from your law, but you are near, O oh Lord, and all your commands are true. I have known from my earliest days that your decrees never change. And Revelation chapter 14. The Lamb and the 144,000. Then I saw the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him were 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a sound from heaven like the roaring of a great waterfall or the rolling of mighty thunder. It was like the sound of many harpists playing together. This great choir sang a wonderful new song in front of the throne of God and before the four living beings and the 24 elders. And no one could learn this song except those 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. For they were spiritually undefiled, pure as virgins, following the Lamb wherever he goes. They have been purchased from among the people on the earth as a special offering to God and to the Lamb. No falsehood can be charged against them. They are blameless. The three angels. I then and I saw another angel flying through the heavens, carrying the everlasting good news to preach to the people who belong to this world, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. And people, fear God! He shouted, "Give glory to Him! For the time has come when He will sit at as judge. Worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all the springs of water." Then another angel followed him through the skies, shouting, "Babylon has fallen! That great city has fallen because she seduced the nations of the world." and made them drink the wine of her passionate immorality. Then a third angel followed them, shouting, Anyone who worships the beast and his statue, or, or who accepts his mark on the forehead or the hand, must drink the wine of God's wrath. It is poured out, undiluted, into God's cup of wrath. And they will be tormented with fire and burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and the Lamb. 
The smoke of their torment rises forever and ever, and they will have no relief day or night, for they have worshipped the beast and his statue and have accepted the mark of his name. Let this encourage God's holy people to endure persecution patiently and remain firm to the end, obeying his commands and trusting in Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this down. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit. They are blessed indeed, for they will rest from all their toils and trials, for their good deeds follow them. The harvest of the earth. Then I saw the Son of Man sitting on a white cloud. He had a gold crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then an angel came from the temple and called out in a loud voice to the one sitting on the cloud. Use the sickle, for the time has come for you to harvest. The crop is ripe of the earth. The crop, the crop is ripe on the earth. So the one sitting on the clouds swung his sickle over the earth, and the whole earth was harvested. After that, another angel came from the temple in heaven, and he ha also had a sharp sickle. Then another angel, who has power to destroy the world with fire, shouted to the angel with the sickle, Use your sickle now to gather the clusters of grapes from the vines of the earth, for they are fully ripe for judgment. So the angel swung his sickle on the earth and loaded the grapes into the great winepress of God's wrath. And the grapes were trotted in a winepress outside the city, and blood flowed from the winepress in a stream about 180 miles long and as high as a horse's bridle. That is all for today's reading. We'll see you tomorrow.